Hey everybody, Nick here, and today we're going to do a little bit of disassembly and upgrade on this little guy right here. This is a framework laptop. For those of you who are unfamiliar, and I'll go on ahead and I'm just going to get jumping into things here, the framework laptop is a very, very interesting product um, whose basic goal is repairability and upgradability. It is a laptop. Uh, it is a laptop computer. It functions, well, just like any other laptop computer. I'll take it open here. Show you what you got here. There you go. Uh, but it is just a laptop at its core, but fundamentally it's doing something very different than a lot of what you're going to see from your Apples and your Googles and your Dells and your Lenovo's and whatnot, in that they are really doing their best to make things upgradable and repairable. Um, first off, I guess before I go any further, I'd like to thank my Patreon patrons, um, as well as, well, myself, uh, because, <laughs> yeah, I picked this guy up partly for review, but partly because I wanted to give it a shot. And frankly, I just love the ethos of this. This is the driver, by the way, that they include with the uh, laptop here. This is a single Torx T5. I may end up moving to a different driver for this, but I figure I might as well if I can get through it with the tool they give me. Show that off. But um, my goal here for today, and the reason that we're doing this, is that I'm taking this laptop, which I originally purchased. When I first got it, I thought, you know, let's see if it's worth a damn, right? And so what I did is I bought a relatively low-end configuration, right? I uh, bought myself a... Um, the, the kind of the lowest end of the Intel 11th gen. In retrospect, buying into Intel in 11th gen, not necessarily a brilliant idea, but I am hashtag not a brilliant man, so there should be no shock here. But anyways, so I picked this guy up uh, kind of on a lock, so to speak, of just like, well, you know, it's good to have an extra computer around in case my normal computer, which is a, a MacBook, by the way, um, in case it has problems, as it inevitably, well, as they tend to. Um, and so I figured, you know, well, what the heck, I'll go ahead and I'll pick one up. And I wanted to support the company. I wanted to support the ethos, all of that kind of stuff that they were doing. But the real question then became, well, like, how how was it? And it's turned out I really like it. There were some issues with it, 100%. The biggest of which is battery life is not amazing on these guys. Um, but you know what? Aside from that, uh, and, you know, of course, since I'm using it mostly with Linux, there have been little growing pains here and there, a lot of which are actually more the fault of the Linux folks than the, uh, than the framework folks. But nonetheless, I've been very impressed with it. And so when they recently announced that they had an upgrade available to move to a 12th gen Intel processor, that's what's in this bag right here, as well as replacing the top panel with a uh, CNC made version, which is supposed to be stiffer and vaguely nicer, um, which I never really felt like the original one was non-nice and bad. But, you know, here we are, as well as I'm going to install a different color backplate, uh, just because I think that's going to be slightly more attractive to me. But anyways, uh, yeah, so my goal here today is to do a, a disassembly and replacement of the motherboard as well as the... Um, the top part here of the uh, of the device. And so I've already unscrewed all the screws in the back, I believe. And this is, by the way, not a tutorial. This is aggressively not a tutorial. What you are doing is watching a jackass fumble through the process. I have the official documentation right uh, over there open up. So I'm, you know, referring to it as we're doing things. But uh, what I've already done so far is shut the computer down. There we go. Uh, shut the computer down. And I've also disabled the, uh, the battery on this guy um, such that that it was, it will not be attempting to, uh, to do that at all. So next step here is going to be to disconnect the touchpad. So I've got my little keyboard here, and this is my, my, my machine and everything like that. So I'm supposed to just take this and, uh, lift this off, and there we go. We've removed the very top of the shell here. This guy can be, um, put down for a second. We'll go ahead and put that down for a second. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is unplug the battery here. Um, okay, so they say be careful when unplugging the battery. It's easy to bend the pin. Grip the connector edges with both fingers. Slide the connector straight from the socket. And I believe this right here is the battery connector because it is a connector attached to the battery. That would track. So I'm just going to gently get in there with some fingernails and see if I can't maybe pull this loose. Maybe. Ah, sorry, my uh, Batman mask hit the top there. The other question that we're going to be asking here is, uh, can you do a disassembly of a framework laptop whilst wearing a Batman mask? And that's a separate question, really, in my estimation. Okay, there we go. Pop that loose. There we go. Oop, uh, let's not bend those connectors. And... 
I don't think, nope, none of the connectors are bad. Beautiful. All right, so my battery is now disconnected. Life is a little bit more secure here immediately. That was easy enough. Disconnect the speaker from the main board. I can do that. 100%. Here we go. Pop it on loose. By the way, you're going to note you get like little helpful markings. Like this right here is a, uh, well, looks like a speaker. So I can tell that that is the speaker connector and it is disconnected. Disconnect the audio board cable from the main board. Okay, um, use a fingernail of the spudger, this little guy, to flip up the black latch on the connector, then slide the cable out. Okay, one of them. All right, flip up the black latch. Is that it? Yep, that is. And then I lift that. Oh, that's a tiny little ribbon cable right there. All right. And so since I do a lot of disassemblies, uh, I figured I'd just go ahead and do it on camera. Why not? Okay, disconnect the display from the main board. All right, using your fingers, uh, disconnect it from the top left-hand side. This is my left. You can tell because it makes an L. By using the pull tab to pull it upwards. Okay, so that must be the pull tab. Is this a pull tab? Or is this whole... Oh, this whole thing is the pull tab. From the on the top left hand side by using oh well that worked all right easy enough disconnect the webcam from the main board it looks like this whole affair by using the black pull tab pull it directly upwards where is my black pull tab here come on now are you a pull tab you're a pull tab pull hold that down pull upwards okay that was easy enough Remove the Wi-Fi module. Okay, I meant to check. Does this have... All right, beautiful. So, uh, yes, I know it's not actually Wi-Fi, but it just, I figured I would make somebody cringe by doing that. Okay, release the black and white Wi-Fi antenna cables by lifting them out of their rubber holders. Okay, we can do this. Oh, yeah, there you go. Looks like the rubber holder just came right off. So that's awkward but okay let's uh let's pull this up here come on get out of there there we go okay the rubber holders are off uh that may not be good in and of itself but so be it unfasten the silver bracket yep i got that bit this is actually a smart little thing holding these little finicky antennas in place so i'll go ahead and i'll put this down right over here and then I will uh, pull the module out of the socket. If I can try and keep... Here we go. If I can try and possibly keep the antennas attached, I... Oh, no, I really can't because the Wi-Fi antennas here are... Uh, there's a new set of them for the new display top. So I am going to need to dis uh, disassemble this guy, remove these antenna connectors regardless... So, uh, yeah, there's one, there's two. All right, that whole thing is going to come off in a moment here, but not this moment. Okay, good. So there we go, remove memory from the main board. Technically, I don't know that I need to do this because I'm actually going to leave this memory in this main board for now. Uh, but let's see here, pull, yeah, the top and bottom clips. Yeah, I'm not sure I need to do that, 100%. I do want to remove my M.2 drive here because I am going to, at least for the very start of things here, uh, I'm going to take the M.2 from this and use it with the new motherboard. I bought some extra RAM. My goal, actually, for this, one of the nice things about this motherboard and one of the nice things about what they're doing here is that they have made everything very modular such that I can actually run this guy in... So I have spent a part, of, you know, the last couple of days um, printing a case, a uh, 3D printed case for the motherboard here that will effectively allow me to turn this into a little tiny server, uh, which is a beautiful thing. So when I install, you know, I'll keep the memory in there, put in a different bit of storage because I don't need my uh, full data on there. Hey, look, it's my data. Um, but anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep the memory in there. Doesn't seem to be a whole lot of reason to do so. Okay, so at this point in time, um, I think it's wise and prudent. Uh, do I want to remove the main board? 
yeah, I might as well, right? If I'm going to have to do this anyways. Um, so remove the mainboard fasteners. They're showing me a little diagram here. Looks like here is a fastener. Okay, that's one fastener. Oh, boy, look at that little screw. Little tiny dude. Okay, there's one. And I'm putting these in roughly the orientation they came off the device in. Worth noting that every single thing I've done in here is T5, which is a beautiful thing. Looks like we've got another one right here. That's easy enough. It looks like this guy. is coming off right here and looks like this guy is coming out right here all right so i've removed the five screws and now remove the main board grab from the bottom edge and lift very gently all right so i'm gonna use my spud is it really just this easy okay is there anything still attached Holy crap, that was very, very straightforward, right? Here is the main board. Now, this is the motherboard of the computer, and uh, there you go. You can see the cooling solution, which I got to be real here, is struggling. Uh, certainly, Intel is not particularly good at, um, well, running cool, uh, and we're not in this generation any more than they are in the modern era. So, uh, but nonetheless, yeah, holy crap, that was easy. All right, so what I'm going to go on ahead and do is I'm going to, well, I've got it right here. I'm going to go ahead and put my main board here into its case. Is this the, corrupt, the, the correct orientation? No, it is not. Maybe it is. No, it is not. So I'll just put this right here, and it actually looks like it has little locating tabs and pins here. So I'm just going to put that right there. And can I snap this on top of it to keep it in? It looks like it has places for the screws to go in. The question is whether the new main board comes with new screws, but regardless. So this can live right here. I'll put an, uh, an SSD in there. I'm not going to snap everything together because I don't have the uh, solid state drive in there yet. But that's now off and safe and happy. So we've got the main board out. Um, that was, like I said, that was pretty remarkably straightforward. The next thing I'm going to switch over to do is I'm going to uh, pull up the guide that tells me how to replace the top cover. Um, and wow, only 12 minutes in. Okay, that's not bad. So let's do the top cover here. Um, so step one, shut it down, done that. Step two, unplug power, unscrew fasteners, remove input cover, yeah, Wi-Fi bracket. Unhook the antenna cables. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure I've done that fully. Okay, that's good. Um... Good, 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 good. Okay, connect the disconnect display and webcam cables from the main board. Yep, that's good. Remove the bezel. So flatten the bad boy out here entirely. What is this action? Oh, that's one of the uh, antenna holders. Okay, uh, and then remove the bezel. It's attached by magnets and doesn't require... Okay, that's kind of cool. Uh... Once the bezel starts peeling from the bottom of the display, lift with caution. There are some patches of double-sided tape along the bezel, along the bottom edge, so take extra care. Okay. Let's be very... Make like a redhead and be a little ginger with this. Uh, okay, sorry, redheads. Uh, let's... Come on. Why are you not coming off? I'm being very careful here. Make sure the back and left right fasteners you unscrewed earlier don't get caught on the lid. Yeah, that's fine. I'm good with that. Oh, there we go. I think I got it. Yeah, there's the tape. All right. Okay, so I've got my uh, got my little facet or uh, fascia off there, I suppose. Okay, remove the display. Of, okay, using the T5 bit, uh, and screw the four fasteners. Connecting the display, that looks like you here. One. This is the scary part for me, because I really would just as soon not injure this display. Although it is very reassuring to know that if I do, I can buy another one and only pay for my mistake. 
that way. Okay, there's another one. Three. Uh, and it looks like four. Handle the display by the side edges. Don't touch the bottom area. Okay, so you can gently lift it from the corner using a fingernail. You're having a lot of faith in me here, buddy. Okay, oh, hey, this is happening. All right, this, what's this here? That's just adhesive. This cable needs to come unstuck. Oh, did it tell me to unroute that cable? Uh, free the display cable from the bottom cover. Okay, that was the step I skipped here. Okay, got that. This appears to be the cable, or the display. I'm going to very gingerly set this down over here so that it's out of my way and I'm less inclined to hurt it. So now what we've got here is a uh, disconnect. Uh, yeah, we did that part. Let's remove the webcam. All right, let's remove the webcam. Also a microphone. One thing that I do like very much about the framework here is that it does have hardware uh, toggles for the audio and the microphone. I'm um, sorry, for the audio and the webcam. And this isn't just like at the level of the OS. This is outright like, no, the, the, the OS no longer even sees the webcam and mic. Okay, uh, remove the magnetic washers under the screws. I assume that's this here and this here. Beautiful. Flip up the latch on the webcam cable. The hell? Oh, oh, this bad boy right here. Okay, so that has one of these latchy dudes. So I lift that up. And now I should be able to uh, remove the webcam module. Okay, so that's this whole situation. By the way, if you're curious about any of the tools I'm using, this is it. So if you buy a framework, they include this for free. All right, that comes loose. Ah, here we go. Okay, so here's my webcam module as well as a microphone. Damn, tiny. All right. There you go. All right, unscrew and remove the top cover. If my new top cover has hinges attached, it does not. Then, uh, I don't care, unscrew the three fasteners on the right hinge using your T5 bit. Okay, no, stop, magnetic washer. Three, okay, that's... Get a different perspective here. That's ah, there it is. Okay, one, two, and three. All right, one, and then two. Ah, where the heck did my screw go? Oh, right there. Okay, that's easy enough. One, two. okay, no, two. No, I was right. I'm orienting them off to the side here, two. Three, okay, that just let this side loose. There are a lot of magnets up in this. Uh, let me use my tweezers real quick. These, these tweezers are featured on nickshabazz.com slash tools. All right, so that's removed. Now, same over here, I imagine. Actually, let me not just imagine. Yeah, repeat this for the same. Okay, good. Their documentation is quite good. Um, I gotta say that. I'm very impressed. Um, it is remarkably well photographed and things like that, um, how to do all of this. So that's good. Okay, lift the laptop slightly, remove the now disconnected top cover, which will still have the antenna and camera cables attached. Okay, so here is the camera cable that is, oh, Okay, well, here's this bit. It's no longer attached to this one. One thing I'm curious about uh, while I'm sitting here is what the differences are between these two. So this is, oh, I see. This is a stamp piece. This is a CNC piece. Uh, CNC here being, of course, computer numerical control. That is, it is milled out like, well, uh, 
It's a nice piece of CNC machinery around here. Uh, can be a CNC machinery. Do I really not have... Hey, here's a piece of CNC machinery. It's right here. This is a Wee Knives uh, Synergy. You can see here this is cut from one piece of metal with a uh, computer numerical mill. So, uh, well, controlled mill. And so what we see here are there are these additional stiffening uh, areas here, which will help. It's got a little bit of extra padding, it looks like, up here behind the display. It comes with a brand new webcam cable as well as antenna. The antenna makes sense because the antenna is going to be integral to the whole shebang here, right? Maybe this is the antenna area right here. Everything else, I mean, yeah, seems okay. Cool. So we got ourselves a uh, new top cover here. And the top side of it doesn't look so different. These sides, there's a, a tape around the outside there. So don't trust the, uh, mistrust the edges there. A little smoother. All right, cool. Okay, so this is the brand new CNC milled top bit. Install the top cover. Take the new top cover, place it under the hinges, fasten the three fasteners back together. Okay, I can do this. Take this little bit here. All right. Uh, these need to go... Does it come with the new fasteners? It does. Oh, that's fancy. Okay. So I didn't actually need to... Okay, let me confirm that I'm not being an idiot here. Yes. Okay, because this fastener goes here. And so this needs to not be in this position. This needs to be someplace that isn't that position. So what I need to do now is actually remove these fasteners here. Is there one more fastener on this side? It actually looks like they're... Okay, yeah, it looks like there is one more fastener here that goes underneath there, because I was only removing three. Sorry about that. Got a uh, phone call come in there. But okay, what I was just realizing, though, is that there is actually some additional screws. Um, it looks like the hinge goes in underneath this screw here. Uh, and so the whole thing is just being kept maybe a little bit more securely. Is that true? Uh, oh, oh no, this is a display screw. That's what's going on here. Okay, I got it. I figured it out. Life is good. Okay, so now what I need to do is get my get my life back together here. All right, um, so what we're going to do is do some screw removal here. You go here. One of the frustrating parts is I now end up with an extra set of hardware for some of these things. Um... You are going to go up here. That's not frustrating in and of itself, because it's nice, because if I screwed it up somehow, that way I wouldn't have to replace the, or uh, order new screws or something. But it does mean that I have to keep track of a different set of hardware, and I will come out of this with extra screws, which is fine. It, again, it, it, there's no problem with that being the case, but it is just I need to be extra careful here because I know I'll end up with extra screws. All right, there is that. All right, there is this. And here is uh, this. Okay. So now what I got to do is set this down such that it is in the right positioning. Uh, I assume that goes underneath there. This goes there. Okay, so that one's in place now. This is not quite. But why is it not quite? Let me get a different perspective here. That cable is sort of in the way. Maybe it goes under there. I don't know that it goes under there. Okay, yeah, there we go. Just needed to lift that slightly. Because, okay, now I see where we're at. So I got to reattach 
this screw here, we'll start there. I, like I said, sorry I'm not being my normal talkative self here as I'm doing this, but I'm trying not to screw up the laptop. I have been very impressed with the hardware, all things considered, right? Is it as nice of an experience as, say, an M1 Mac? No, it isn't because, well, a couple of issues. The hardware is Intel, uh, and unfortunately, Intel is, well, let's just put it this way. They've got some catching up to do. Uh, and so, hopefully, moving to the 12th generation Intel. Oop, uh, this is a reversible driver, by the way. Uh, but hopefully, that'll be uh, that'll be nice. Um, and I suspect moving up to a higher end processor will probably do some good too. This will have the efficiency cores, but nonetheless, the battery life has not been great. I got to be real with you there. Um, but more importantly, the um, the biggest issues I've had with it have, generally speaking, not been issues with the laptop itself. They've been issues with uh, Linux, uh, which, by the way, is the operating system I run on this, because no Windows, just no. Uh, anything without a Unix shell is relatively useless to me in my work, and I know Windows subsystem for Linux exists, but that's... Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Um... I mean, I get why they would do that. That way there's a, a good computer subsystem within there. Oh, sorry, Shade. Anyways, so, I but I've mostly been pretty impressed with the whole uh, shebang here, uh, except that there have been, you know, uh, some occasional hardware blips, mostly in the, the heat situation. And, yeah. Okay, uh, next step here is uh, reinstall the webcam. So, looks like make sure the black latch is up. So webcam, oh, it comes with new webcam screws too. All right. So let's take that out and take that out. Um, oh, and the new washers. All right. So again, I like that they're including all the hardware. Well, I'm going to end up with a little hardware store after this. Okay. So reinstall the webcam, make sure the black latch is flipped up. Black latch is indeed flipped up. So I can get the ribbon cable in there. Okay, slide the cable straight in until the white line is almost at the edge of the connector. Okay, slidey, slidey, slidey. And now, I am going to make sure everything is properly aligned, and I'm going to flip that latch down, and we are good to go. All right, beautiful. So there's that. Next thing, find the two washers, orient them so that the notch is where it needs to be. That I can do. Uh, probably, yeah, there we go. I think that's it. Yep. Now what I do... Because this driver is slightly magnetic, every other piece of hardware on the table sticks to it, which is charming. Let's put that there. Really, magnets, really. All right, um, let's put you here. And then attach this to the end. But yeah, so unfortunately, you know, Linux on the desktop is uh, still a little bit of a rough experience, although, again, still better than some other experiences I might have. So I can't get too bent out of shape, right? Pressing this all the way down, and then I'll do the same thing over here, just to try and avoid any Boeing situation. And not Boeing is in aeronautics, but Boeing is in that kind of thing. Oh, sorry, that was slightly off camera. I've been working on this guy over here. Okay, uh, that's fine. This all looks good. Beautiful. This is connected. The black latch is down. Do not over tighten the fasteners. Yeah, looks good. Reinstall the display. Okay. Four alignment pins. Make sure to only handle the display by this side. Don't over tighten the fasteners. This I can do. 
Got me a display. All right. Gently. This, okay, hold on. Both this and this need to be not here. These go above the display. So let's have them above the display. And now I slide this whole situation into place. There are indeed little alignment holes, which I'm gonna see if I can't push oh so gently into position. There we go. Come on now. There we go. There we go. There we go. And there we go. Okay, display is in place. Now, screw the four fasteners into place. Did this come with the extra fasteners for the display? Looks like it did, but... Maybe they are different. Ah. It came for one of them, at least. Okay, because there's a magnet right freaking here. Is that... Okay, that just went straight in, so that's a problem. Uh, where is my other display fasteners? Did you go in? So it does look like they actually changed. The reason they included the extra fasteners there is it looks like they actually changed the diameter or at least some other element of the, uh, of the screw there. So, oh, get in there. Yeah, now that's got bite. All right, that's there. I'll put this guy in place right here come on now no don't go onto the magnet you jackass i need to be very careful with the tip of this screwdriver if i scratch my display i'm gonna be a sad freaking panda all right come on get in there go into the hole I hear my wife walking by outside just as I say, come on, get in there, go into the hole. So, at least I got that going for me, I guess. All right, I think this goes up top. Ooh, don't skate out on the display. It's dangerous up there. Maybe this is the same size as the old ones. Okay, let's grab you. Okay, really? That doesn't feel like it's the right diameter at all. All right, so then I can assume that the other screws, the original screws here at the top, are going to be the correct answer. Uh, tighten the four fasteners in place. No, that's not it either. Okay, let's try the original original. Okay, come here. Why are you not going in there, broski? Get a slightly different perspective. Balancing giving you all a view and looking carefully at this is not straightforward. Okay. Um, let's try this guy. So the locator pin is in place. That's good, at least. Did I, am I doing a dumb thing? Oh, I really, really am. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Shabazz, not a brilliant man. What I've just realized is that there is a screw underneath there that I just did not remove. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just really dumb, uh, really impressively dumb. That was great. So what I'm going to do is slightly lift the display here. 
I don't want to move it around too much, but I am going to lift it up enough that I can get that screw out from under there. Wow. No wonder it didn't want to go into a Torx T5 hole. Good Lord. What an idiot. All right, there we go. Turns out that when you're trying to inscrew, uh, to inscrew, it's uh, like to insert a screw. Oh, why didn't that one come with a screw? Good Lord. But turns out trying to insert a screw into the top of another screw is much less effective than trying to insert a screw into the hole that is tapped for that screw. I know this is going to come as a shock to some of you, but there you go. But anyways, as I fiddle with this, um, my biggest, uh, I, as a Linux user, um, it is remarkably good in terms of hardware, right? Um, the hardware support out of the box with Fedora Linux, which is generally my choice these days. Use Gentoo, Ubuntu, Debian, a whole bunch of different options. But for me these days, Fedora is the right combination uh, of bleeding edge, well, okay, of regular updates without being too bleeding edge. Uh, it's not too conservative, but yeah, anyway, so it just kind of works. Um, but this really did just work out of the box on Linux. There's no part of the hardware that is opaque to it. And the fingerprint center, uh, sensor, that is, works great. Beautiful thing. Okay, so we've now got our display installed. Uh, now it's saying reroute the cables. So let's do that. The display cable needs to go here. Oh, it goes on the outside of the hinge. Tell me it's not going under the hinge. No, it comes over here and then around and under here. Okay. So that needs to go back into the main board at some point, but not this point. That's fine. Is that really just going over the hinge like that? It sure is. Okay, good. Now I also need to redo the... Wi-Fi antenna cables over the right hinge, webcam cable over the right hinge. Okay, so that's both of these guys going through here, around, over the right hinge, and under. And I assume into that little gap, but... All right, so that's all there. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, at this point in time, we have reconverged with the original, um, with the original uh, instructions for reinstalling the motherboard. Uh, I went ahead and I looked at all of this ahead of time, so we would have as good a shot as we can of doing this right, assuming I, of course, wasn't trying to screw a cable into a screw, or I'm sorry, screw a screw into another screw. I couldn't have anticipated just how stupid I was going to be here. But, uh, yeah, all right. So we're now back to the, the main drag, so to speak. So let's let's head back there. Um, do I want to reinstall my top cover? I may actually just reinstall the bezel. Do I need to remove... Is there double-sided tape here that I'm worried about? The bezel is attached by magnets now. Okay, that's good. So that should go there. Let's get everything in place here. I see that goes there. I am out of whack here subtly. There we go. Now I am in whack. Weirdly enough, that's a good place to be. Something's up with my webcam here. Maybe I have done that backwards or something. Considering I've already been not a brilliant man. No, I don't think I've done it backwards. That would be implausible. But it isn't sitting quite right. So let me reverse this here and play with it a little bit more. Maybe it's just not seated properly in the area. All right. Yeah, it is kind of bowed up a little bit. I think maybe 
There we go. That was my problem. It was resting on rather than in. Uh, so hopefully now, when I put this guy back together, it should sit a little bit more flush. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, just a little tiny thing, but... This should then allow me to install my bezel. And everything should go smoothly, <laughs> he says. Jack Assley. Okay, that's now fully seated and flush. Now let's try putting on the bezel from the top here. Uh, okay, that's snapped into place. Um, it doesn't still quite feel perfect. The top there. Could I have... Maybe if I release a little bit of tension over here. Maybe it's just slightly out of horizontal alignment. That could be. Yeah, that felt a little better. Ah, well, okay. When that snapped down, it snapped natural, so that's good. All right, put that down there. This is going to not work right now because that's in place. Okay, so there's that. This now should go all the way down. This is well seated now. Are my bottom corners good to go? Uh, okay. There's that. Let's reverse the whole shebang one more time here. As opposed to the whole shebaz. This doesn't quite feel right. What does it? Let's take a look-see underneath there, make sure there's nothing. Okay. Might could be that I just need to move this over. Let's take a look at the diagram of how they're running those cables one more time. Okay, so it looks like they need to go over the antenna, through the routing channels near the hinge. Through the routing channels. Over the right, through the rubber channels on the main board. It's a flat channel without a hook, so just make sure it's laying mostly flat inside it. Oh, okay. Do that. Okay, yeah, there we go. That feels a little bit better. Okay. Now this bit here goes down underneath there to the main board. These little dudes here are going to go down this way to the antenna, or to the Wi-Fi card when I reinstall it. All right, there we go. Everything seems to be working up top here. We will see. Now I'm going to switch back to the motherboard replacement guide, which has the next step being install the new main board into the framework laptop. Okay, well, it's a big thing that's a little, little. Let's uh, pop this bad boy open here. Come on. Really? There we go. So we got this in an ESD bag here. That is, of course, electrostatic discharge. Okay. The easiest way to properly install the motherboard is to align the two alignment pins in the bottom cover with the two holes in the main board. Alignment pins. Oh, this and uh, that looks like. All right. 
So let's drop it so that that goes in there. Good. That cable needs to be not there. This needs to, I think I just need to kind of do a little wigulation here. Wigulation, I suppose. Uh, to get this in place. It's hung up on, oh, it's the display cable. No, that's not the display cable. It's this cable, whatever the hell this cable is. I forget what that is. That might be the display cable. Um, okay. But now, I bet if I move this very slightly in one of these directions or another. So that's, uh, there you go. That lays in place. And actually, while I'm here, I'm just going to reinsert this ribbon cable here. Let's open the flap here. Take you and just spudge it a little bit to the side there. And now insert it to the black line and push down. There you go. All right, so that's in place at least. Um, we've got the this cable. This is the webcam cable. These are the antennas. So this must be the display cable here. That's good to go. Now the real question is, are we bound up on the top there? No, doesn't look like it. Okay, yeah, now that's inserted through. I think it was just the display cable in the way there. All right, once you place the mother mainboard down, make sure that the speaker cable, which is here, the uh, display cable there, Wi-Fi cables here, webcam cable here, audio board cable, battery cable are not stuck between. They are not. We are good to go. Screw the main board into place using the T5 bit. If screw the five fasteners into the motherboard. Um, okay. That's fine. Here is, let's do number one. Let's do number two. That sounds very wrong. Like I'm walking a dog. All right. There's number two. Number three has attached itself to my screwdriver, which, thank you, I guess. Uh, number three. By the way, for the curious here, wondering where my electrostatic discharge questions are, uh, like straps and whatnot are, that's what the ankle is doing. The ankle is the correct answer. And this is the last of them. And you go right here. Okay, good. One, two, three, four, five. Connect the speaker to the main board. Okay, I can do this. Ready? and connected, <laughs> connected, oh yeah, there we go, nice little, <laughs> feel like the lock picking lawyer, we, okay, we got a pop on one here, um, audio board is done, oh, no, audio board is not done yet, what the heck did I just connect, I think they used the wrong image there, no? Okay, connect the audio board. Oh, okay, there we go. They're just pointing to it. Yeah, so I did that bit already. That's connected now. That's nice. Uh, let me pull a little bit. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Beautiful. All right, connect the display to the motherboard. Hold the pull tab and connect it by lining the pins from the cable with the socket. And then I assume pressing down, but they didn't say that part, but that's fine. Okay. There we go, that's in place, beautiful. 
connect the webcam to the motherboard. That's this bad boy here. All right. There is that. This is actually a little on the shorter side. I'm sort of wondering whether I may have... Yeah, that might be a little... Let me pull my display up real quick here. Or my bezel, that is, up real quick here. And see whether I got any more play on this. No, I really don't. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of route you around. Okay. Oh, that just did it. All right. So I've got you there. It didn't seat really satisfyingly, but it did seat. So I guess that'll do. So that's popped there. Let's put you here. Does that, does anything plug in there? think anything plugs in there. All right, so then I'll put these guys here, and I should be able to reseat everything now. Oh, everything's reseated. All right. A webcam is connected. Beautiful. Wi-Fi module. All right, give me a Wi-Fi module. Da, 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 da. Okay. You go here, and then I'm going to plug you in. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, oh, that's right. This doesn't attach until I reattach the cable. I'm sorry. Uh, like, this screw is what holds these guys on. All right. Uh, so I have a picture here that shows me that the black cable is on the top, and the white cable is not. Okay. Hey, that's right. I get new rubber grommets here. So let me run these through. Okay. First you go in there. Oh, no, no, no. Come on. You go down in there. Good. Good. Come on, rubber grommet. You go there. Good. And now white is on the bottom and it needs to be rotated around, and I need to remove this little Wi-Fi antenna condom. A little bit of a Wi-Fi lactic, if you will. Um, really? Wi-Fi lactic? <laughs> Not a bad line, I guess, but oof. All right, let's plug. Uh, can I get you underneath there? I can. All right, beautiful. So then that goes there. And this, oh, it even shows you white versus black there. Okay. I feel like I'm going to be better suited by, uh, a better serve that is by uh, connecting the antenna with the card loose and then slipping it in. But we're going to see about that. Get the antennas in place at least here. All right. Take off the y lactic. You come loose. Just because it's easier to orient. Like these don't necessarily want to go on the right way. Come on. Pop in place there, broski. That's requiring a weird amount of force. There we go, you're in, white on the bottom, and I unplug the cable from its rubber channel, but that's okay. They need to be oriented in this downward fashion here. Ah! Let's try this again. There we go, that's on. Okay, beautiful. And it's off. Okay. Well, that was short-lived. One more time with feeling. Get in there, buddy. Come on, broski. There we go. So, now what I can do is 
slip this into place. Good. Now what I can do is with these guys sort of duly attached. Oh, have I just screwed myself? No, because the orientation is supposed to be that way, but I think I might have screwed myself because I think in order for me to make this turn, they might need to rotate around further. Well, hold on now. Nope. Disconnected. All right. Oh, and they popped out of that one, too. Good Lord. You go in there. I think I've learned my lesson, and I'm no longer going to attempt the... Uh, loose card approach. Instead, I'll bend this... I'll bend the cables first, and then... See if I can't slip them in. For what it's worth, when I first... I bought this guy, the original version, that is, as a DIY kit as well. Uh, and so this was the hardest part of installing, like of putting the computer together the first time, too, was getting these guys both aligned and happy. Nope. That needs to go in there. Come on. Go in the hole. You stay there. Good. Good antenna. Good boy. All right. And I have quite... Oh, this is feeling good. This is feeling good. I I feel like I'm... Oh, 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 no, no, that wasn't it. Had a little pop for a moment, but it was just my soul breaking or something. Okay, good. Put that there. That there. This is exactly upside down now. Let's try reorient. Good, 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 good. Almost there. Almost there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Did that just pop on? No, it didn't. All right, almost there. Come here. Come here. Good boy. Reduced to talking about a Wi-Fi antenna plug like a dog. But I suppose that's okay. Sit. Sit. Stay. Uh, maybe lay down. Uh, there we go. Good. Stay. Stay. Day. There we go. Okay. Well, we're on it here. We're, we're making progress. We're doing good. Uh, this goes like this to keep the whole shebang in place here. And we are. Come on. We're so close. I can taste it. Come off it. Get in place. Go. Stay. Stay, 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 good. Okay, Wi-Fi card is installed. <laughs> Route the Wi-Fi antenna cables properly. Yes, I've done that already, but thank you. Um, it should not touch the speaker below. Um, okay, let's make sure that's not a thing. By just, yep, there we go. That's good. Okay, memory. Let's add a little bit of memory here. I remember. Okay, uh, let's use CNC knife to open memory kit. Memory kit here, just doing some or say a vengeance DDR4. Nothing too ridiculously fancy. All right. 
Uh, once it is inserted, it will rise up at a... Okay. That is in place. That was satisfying. That is upside down. This, however, is in place. The alignment pins are there. That was also satisfying. Install the M.2. I can do this. Uh, let us... Oh, I haven't put the battery in place yet, but that's okay. I don't need to. I also haven't... Oh, that's the touchpad. All right, that's fine. I don't care. Um, let's put the M.2 in place here. There's that. Beautiful. Uh, where is my M.2 screw? I believe you to be an M.2 screw. Yeah, I think you are. Well, if you're not, you're sure thread into the hole. Yeah. There we go. M.2 screw is done there. Double check that the battery pins are straight. Look, I'm not judging either way, but yeah, they look... Yep, okay. Uh, here we go. Before, don't plug in the battery connector if they look bent. Yeah, that's fine. Reconnect carefully. Slide in without letting the connector twist or bend. All right. Let's get everything in place here. Rip from both sides. Slide straight in. Okay, being a little extra cautious here. All right. There we go. Feels like it's on the way. Come on. No, that's just the pull tab I'm working on here. Why are you not going in place here? Sliding in straight. Yeah. This battery connector is a little bit funky. Let me just double check my pins in there. Everybody looks happy, all right. So there are two little lines along the top here. Should be that I should be able to just press. Here, I'll use my spudger, maybe. Is it supposed to go deeper? I feel like it's supposed to go deeper. There we go. Come on. Go in there. I kind of want a second spudger. Luckily, I have one. Although this spudger is kind of weak sauce. I'm going to be real with you here. There we go. All right. Yeah, we're in place. Beautiful. All right. Next up here, uh, prepare to connect the input cover. All right. So that's all there. That's all happy. Okay. Gently place the input cover side down. The bottom cover is indicated by the image. As I fall off my freaking desk here. You ever watch a jackass build a laptop? Well, now you have. Locate the loop at the end of the thing. Insert your finger into it using slight force. Okay. So. Yeah, and it does go in at this orientation. And I'm just double checking here. I got storage, I got RAM, I got Wi Fi. Everything seems connected. Let's go ahead and 
pop that bad boy in. Yeah, that clicked. Make sure the touchpad side is fully inserted. It is. Reinstall the input cover. It does have some magnetism holding it in place, which is kind of a cool thing. Why are you not? Oh, that's my flashlight. Why does this not want to fully seat down? Oh, it could be that my Wi-Fi antenna cables are too far out in there. So it doesn't want to slip in with the fingerprint sensor. Maybe that's the case. Yeah. Move that a little bit more out of the way. There we go. That's in place now. Now what I gotta do is screw the fasteners back into the bottom cover. There's that, and that's all snapped together. Okay. And I'm throwing random screws. That's cool. Are you Satan? You are good. Good. There's a very real chance this is not going to boot up, by the way, when I hit the... And that's actually sort of on purpose. It's because I, I disabled the battery in the uh, BIOS before I did all of this. So when that happens, let's not be shocked, shall we? But it might actually, given that I swapped the motherboard out, the BIOS is probably fresh. Now that I'm thinking about it, so... Yeah. Okay. So we do have a problem here immediately, and that is that the fingerprint button isn't wanting to click down, which means my issue was right up in this area here. So luckily I already saw it coming, so I should be able to unpop everything. By the way, this is a complete and total departure from everything I ever do on the channel, but I figured people would be interested, maybe, for whatever reason. At the very least, I know some folks are going to want to laugh at me in the process and might be curious how this whole thing goes down. Again, this is not a tutorial. If you're going to do this, do better, right? Don't be a jackass. But if, you know, all things considered, uh, might still be some content of some interest to some people. All right, why is this not working? Okay, now it worked. I really do think it's just literally the issue of the, uh, I think it's just that Wi-Fi antenna not being in place. All right, insert the inspection cards. Looks like I haven't fully unscrewed this. Ah. Yeah, now that's loose. Should give me a chance to pop this off. Did this come unpopped by any chance? It did not. All right. So I'm gonna slip these guys a little bit further down into this little channel right there. That should hopefully keep them out of the way. And similarly, I'll try and pop them under that. And then put this guy, press him in there. I have RAM in there. And again, I can check it, make sure my battery is fully inserted. This is in, this is in, this display is certainly in, this is in. IO is in, battery is in. All of my keyboard connectors are there. This is connected fully. Okay. 
Um, let's see here. Rinse. It may have a need to be plugged in here for the first boot. It may also need the expansion cards to be in place. I don't know that. We'll see. We'll see just how long this video ends up being. <laughs> okay. Plug that in. Plug this in. It wouldn't shock me if maybe the first boot needed power connected. Let's plug those two in. Those two in. Grab a power cable real quick for it. Tell me a power adapter. I know we're around here somewhere. Here it is. The official framework power adapter. Plug that into the not official ah, picture bears outlet underneath the desk. There we go. Beautiful. Let me plug in this. All right. We are booting up. See here, first boot will take longer than normal as it does memory training. This could be on the order of a minute or two. All right. Fine by me. Take you a minute or two. Keep your secrets. We now have, I hope, a functioning computer. So, look, uh, what do I know overall? What, it, what are my overall feelings on the framework? I'm um, the first. Uh, hey, hey, look, look, we're booting. We're in BIOS. Fedora, it sees everything. Holy crap, it's working. All right, there we go. So um, we have, uh, let's go on ahead and uh, let's see here. I am not going to type my passwords in on video. That's remarkably dumb if it were the case that I were to do that. Hold on just a second here. Uh, indeed, this is a login prompt. Ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a working computer. Holy crap, people. It happened. It worked. Life is freaking good. Here, I'll pull it up. That way, people. Are, uh, there we go. Beautiful. And let's take you full screen. Beautiful. All right, so overall, how did that go? I, if I were not an idiot, it would have gone even smoother, frankly, but all things considered, it went pretty well. Um, I obviously will let you know how I feel about the mainboard upgrade down the road here, but uh, for the most part, that was pretty easy. Um, I'm not necessarily sure I'm loving the fact that this, this bezel here is a very different color than the rest of it. I kind of figured it would be more of a matching silver, but I also understand matching different materials is, well, difficult, right? Um, that's, a, that's a thing that's problematic. But um, all of that said, so far, that, that was a pretty easy upgrade. Uh, all told, and hopefully, uh, well, yeah, hopefully everything continues to work well. Mostly, though, I'm very happy that Framework is doing what they're doing. Insofar as there is a conclusion to all of this, aside from find somebody better to install your mainboard, uh, insofar as there is a conclusion, it's kind of that. It's that, you know, I really do appreciate what Framework is doing here, and the fact that for I was able to upgrade to a nicer processor, right? That's not a given in our day and age. Usually it's buy a whole laptop, throw the whole thing away, right? Um, as opposed to this, where it was just like, yeah, sure, we'll sell you one. And then I was able to switch parts out. I was able to, and this makes me feel very secure, by the way, that if for whatever reason, I completely wrecked the display on this computer, I could swap in a new one without a whole lot of pain, right? Because I just took apart most of the things on there. I feel like if I screwed up the battery or if the battery just inevitably died, I could very easily replace it, 
right? All of that just made me feel very confident that I could service this machine um, successfully. And that is, well, absolutely a beautiful thing. It's something I very much appreciate. So to me, uh, I am very, very, uh, frankly, happy uh, with how that went. And uh, yeah, uh, even though it took the better part of an hour, although, again, might have been a little bit easier if I wasn't on camera, etc., uh, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm delighted. Um, and so I really hope that Framework continues to succeed, right? Even if, you know, the software out of the box is either Windows or Linux, neither of which I like quite as much as Mac OS. Um, and yeah, don't, don't at me, people. But nonetheless, I mean, even if the, uh, the hardware, the battery life, etc., is still maybe a little behind some of what Apple's doing these days, I'm really glad that they're doing this, and I really hope that they continue to grow. Good God, I, this stuff won't come unstuck to me. I really hope they continue to grow, and I hope that they continue to get more and more uh, market share so that they can continue doing cooler and cooler things, so they can get AMD on board maybe, because AMD has really been rocking Intel lately in terms of processor design. And I really hope that they can continue their mission, basically, of creating more repairable, more upgradable um, and frankly, just less hostile computer consuming uh, consumer computing devices. Because so far, that's been my biggest experience. Is like, wow, this is this is way less hostile in a lot of ways. So, anyways, um, good job, framework. I gotta say, you, the, the instructions were clear. It was designed for disassembly, which is somebody who disassembles much less complicated objects on a regular basis. Was very much clear to me, and was something I very much appreciated. Right? I used the, the for the entire disassembly. I used literally two tools, I suppose one spudger and a second spudger, and that was just because I don't keep long fingernails. I guess I pulled some tweezers in there, too, but look, that was pretty impressive. So, all things considered, there you go. I um, hope that was interesting to you, and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day, and I hope this was a uh, potential framework for you in doing this in the future moving forward. <laughs> have a good one. Bye now.